Hi everyone, it's Gem here. Welcome back to The Colour Cave, where we like to play with art stuff. As we speak at this moment, I have my 3D pen heating up. There's a few things that I just wanted to quickly mention. Uh, let's start with the obvious. I've had my hair cut and uh, because it's so short, I know it's not short, but compared to the length it was, um, it's really weird. It feels really odd. I do feel like a new woman because I'm not lugging a ton of hair about so that's awesome anyway yeah people have left lots of comments about having the art supplies that i'm using in my videos and being too frightened to use them and it's not just one or two people it's lots of you and it's something that i really it really upsets me to me art is a pastime it is something that is fun and it's also something that gives so many people pleasure, not just the people that are creating the art. There are people out in the world that do not have an artistic bone in their body, but they still like colours, they still like shape, form, and they like to look at art even if they can't do it themselves. So to be scared or frightened of messing something up and to the point where you're not using something that you've paid for, in my opinion, it is just absolutely bananas. And the tagline for this channel is we like to play with art stuff and that is all I do. I play with it. I have no formal art qualifications. I've never done anything official in terms of art. All I have done is mess about with things, enjoy myself and use a little bit of imagination. So I'm appealing to all of you who are in that position. If you have an art supply or um, anything like that that you're frightened to use, please let these things fulfill their intention and their destiny. If they were living beings, they'd be really upset if they didn't get to do what they were meant to do. And no one's saying that you have to create a wonderful masterpiece. And in fact, no one even has to see what it is you've actually done. If you decide to play about with a set of paints or a new set of pencils or a 3D pen, there's nothing that says that you have to show it to anyone. So why not? The idea is to have fun and make art a fulfilling part of your life. That's why you're, you're all watching these videos because it's something that you're interested in. So I say, go ahead, do it. Even if it's just messing about for 10, 15 minutes with something that you haven't tried, dip a paintbrush in and get going or scribble on a paper or build So It doesn't matter, but don't let it dictate to you because you're frightened. What have you got to be frightened of? There are times when I have trepidation about doing things um, and related to art, but it, it is usually because I am putting it out there on the web, on the YouTube channel, and there's lots of people going to see it, and you know that there could be some sort of backlash. That is entirely different. If it's just for your personal consumption, then just go for it, do it. Go and have some fun, that's what it's all about. The other thing that uh, is quite strange that's happened just recently, if any of you follow me on social media, um, you will know that recently I did a sketch of Stitch from Lilo and Stitch and that was prompted by the conversation I had about favourite childhood films. I went to get some clothes for my honeymoon the other day and I went into one of our cheap shops in the UK called Primark and this is what happened. How awesome is that? How freaky is that? Anyway, so real my throat that I've got this on just for you today. <laughs> just to show you what I actually have, this is the 3D pen. It is called, oh, the light's terrible. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. There we go. Uh, an Intelligent 3D Pen 3. As I say, it was just a cheap one that I bought on Amazon. That is the box that it came in. And this is the set of instructions that came with it. It is mostly in broken English, but the diagram and everything's fine. And you know, it, it's understandable. You know, you don't, you're not gonna have any problems trying to figure out what's being said. It's quite entertaining as well, if you like that kind of thing. Um, also, with that came a few packs of ABS filament. Now this particular pen takes PLA and ABS filament. So along with that, I bought some more, I bought a lot more. I bought, I bought a box full of not just the PLA filament, uh, not just the ABS filament, but the PLA filament too. Now this is the pen itself and it's got this, it's got this little holder and it's got a sucker on the bottom so you can stick it to a surface and it just gives you a resting place for that nib when you're not using it. It is uh, a cabled version. 
Um, so you do have to have a power supply quite close by because the cable itself is not very long. Uh, the first thing I notice about this pen is that the buttons to actually make the filament come out, so when you're actually drawing with it, they are on the far left of the pen. And being a left-handed person, I think that's going to cause me issues because naturally, if you're having to hold a button down, which is what you've got to do with this one, you would want to use your thumb. So I do think that originally this has been designed with right-handed people in mind. Um, so I don't know how awkward that is going to make things. I am I'm not particularly confident within. I, ha I have seen a few videos on 3D pens and it looks really, really difficult. So today I am basically just going to have a mess about with it and see if I can actually produce anything that looks remotely like anything. Anyway, I'll gather everything together now and we can get going. Okay, so first of all, I want to just show you the pen in a little bit more detail so that you can see what's going on. So you can see that it is completely ready to go. Now this is the first problem, everything's upside down because I'm left-handed as I mentioned earlier on, if I turn it this way. So we have a display here that shows the temperature it's running at and when the green light is on it is good to go. These buttons here help you control the speed, no, telling you lies. These buttons control the temperature so you can turn it up or down. These buttons here, this is to make the filament come out of the end and also to retract the filament when you want to unload it and change colours. So these are effectively your stop start buttons as well. If, if you press and hold it, it will continue to go. And if you, if you let go, it will continue to feed the filament out. But after 60 seconds, it cuts out. And that's just like a safety feature that's on it. On the other side, these buttons here control the speed. Why is this not focusing? There we go. So depending on how intricate a piece you're working on you can speed up or slow down how fast this spits out the filament and uh, that is basically um you know a feature that just helps you get a better result from what you're after so that is the pen itself now i do have an end goal for this project I, you know i didn't just go and buy a, a 3d pen for the sake of buying one that's it making noises again it's going into sleep mode because i'm not using it and the light's gone off um, yeah, there are, I do have an end game. Um, one of the things that I really want to do is I want to create, if anyone has ever seen the butterfly Tiffany lamps that look a little bit like this, I was really inspired by that sort of design and I think it's something that, in a mechanical sense, it's something that I can create. But one of my favourite things is my butterfly that I've coloured in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. So the actual Inky Butterfly. This is him here. I would really like to do a, a Tiffany style lamp shape. So the butterfly is sitting up with its wings spread. But using the colours that I have used for Inky in this book. Okay, so here's like a fluorescent orange. Um, fluorescent orange is not a colour that I'm likely to use very often. So I think I'll use this for the practice stuff. So I'm going to cut this open. Okay, it's not, it's not really bendy. Obviously, it becomes malleable when it heats up, but it is quite springy, and I've got a funny feeling that this might get in my way at some point. Now, I have also been advised to have a craft knife or an X-Acto knife handy, um, because there's a lot of sort of whiskery bits that, that sort of spider off it when it's warm, and you can use the knife just to cut them off and tidy things up. So, I have got my trusty little craft knife. This is just a cheap one. I like to buy them from a shop called Flying Tiger. Um, you can get these pretty much anywhere though. So, I'm gonna turn this back on now, hopefully. Okay, so my red light's back on. I need to wait until that goes green, and then I'm gonna start to try and feed the filament in and see if we can get Get, get something to happen. As it's really, really close to the power supply, um, so I don't know whether it's gonna get caught up in the power supply either. I really, really don't know the answer to that until we try. While this is heating up, oh, there we go. I was saying, while this is heating up, I'm gonna have some tea out of my Tim Hortons mug, smudge kitty. All right, let's see if we can get this bad boy going. So I'm gonna pop this in here and I'm gonna press the load button. I can hear the motor running and it's doing nothing. Okay, that's starting to feed in. It is really, really slow though. First note on this, you're gonna have to be super patient. 
Okay, I'm gonna get ready. Because it's gonna start smooshing out the other end really soon, I think. Okay, that's random. Oh, there we go, look. <laughs> okay, I really don't want to touch this because I think it's gonna be hot. Oh, it's not that hot. I need to figure out how to do the speed on this. Four, five, six. It goes up to eight, so let's, let's try, oh no, eight, no. Let's not try eight. Let's try five. Okay. I'm just seeing if I can get a straight line first of all. Okay, I think five might be a little bit quick for a first attempt. <laughs> it does cool down really quickly. Right, so you heard the motor stop in there. It's not the easiest to detach. I have a, a squiggle. I'm going to turn the speed down to three. I'm gonna try, I'm just gonna try and draw a box and see what happens. The weight feels really long, it's really heavy at this end because of the filament and the fact that that's where it's attached. Um, and now it's just not doing anything. Oh, there we go, we're off. I can't even draw a square without messing things up. Oh. Okay. That was my first attempt at a square. Oh, this isn't gonna go well. Yeah, there's there's lots of like stringy bits coming off it. It stinks as well. It really stinks. Once it's once it cools down, it's quite sturdy. I mean, it is still flexible, but it's not. You know, it's not gonna snap or anything. Um, so that's quite encouraging. I'm not enjoying all these kind. I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but there's lots of like stringy bits. They're like hairy. They look like hairs. So I think that's going to complicate things slightly. Um, okay. So the other thing that I have learned just from watching other people doing this is that if you want to fill in an area or colour it in, you're better to give yourself a sort of framework. So if I was working from this square, I'm just going to. No, I can't see. I can't pull that that stringy bit off. I'm actually gonna have to cut it. Oh God, I can't cut through it either. <laughs> oh, there we go, right. So if you want to fill in an area or color it in, you need to get your pen going, but you need to make like some sort of structure, you know, like a framework to work on. So I would, oh, that was supposed to attach to that. That didn't go so well. Let's try going back the way. There we go. So you make yourself like an internal frame and it's just so that you've got... Oh, no. Oh, this is really hard. This <laughs> That was supposed to be stuck. I don't know. Do it that way. That was supposed to be stuck down flat, so that didn't go too well. I wonder if I can stick it down. Like, use it as like a hot, like a hot gun. You know, a hot, hot glue gun. Nope, that's just not doing anything at all. This is really difficult. I don't think there's gonna be any masterpieces anytime soon. Okay, I'm gonna try and stick this bit together as well. So at least I have like an enclosed shape. Okay, I think the trick is once you've pressed the stop button, you still need to keep it moving. So that, because there is like a delay from you pressing the button to the, the bit, the, you know, the rest of the filament coming out. And you can see it's still oozing out a little bit there. Um, so the trick is to keep going after you've pressed the stop button. And it's kind of reduced the amount of sort of stringy bits that are coming off. Okay, so oh, this, this is my square that I'm going to fill in. It is not square at all, but at least it's all joined together now. So I've kind of used those last two moves to kind of stick the, you know, the, the parts that were fragmented together. So let's see if I can fill this in and make it like a, uh, you know, a solid object. This, the button being on the outside is really annoying though, I have to say that. So if you're left-handed, you might not, you might not get on so good with this. Again, I think I could probably do with the speed being a little bit slower here. 
because this is just not it's kind of like icing a cake except you have no control over when to squeeze your piping back <laughs> i'm kind of like struggling to talk here because i feel like this requires so much concentration okay that's going a bit better Obviously with this, when you're filling something in like this, the the more you go on and as it hardens, the, the object will become more rigid and more sturdy, which actually makes it easier to work with. So that feels better already. And once that's dry, I'll be able to put my finger on that to hold it down to do the rest. So I think the hardest part is probably going to be getting started when you're, you know, you're making something in particular. Um, oh, that was still attached. <laughs> Um, so I think once you get going, it might get a bit easier, but I think it's just one of these things that are going to require a lot of practice. Okay, so let's go again. Once you get used to the speed that it's coming out at as well, it does, you know, you get into like a rhythm, it seems to be a bit easier. And it does stick to itself, like when the melted parts, I mean, so as I'm going back and forth here, I'm trying to push the next layer up against the other one so it adheres to the, the part that I've just drawn if you like when you're making a framework that might help to reinforce your framework and just make your whole piece a little bit sturdier you know from the point of view of going back and coloring it and it does absolutely stink though i mean it, it, it absolutely reeks it's just like you know melting plastic that's what it is i suppose okay you can see there that that's it's not very pretty and it kind of looks like half of a cheese toasty however that is pretty solid. Now that I've had a bit of a mess about with it, I'm going to see what happens when I try and retract this. Now, you basically just press the back button as far as I'm aware and hold it. And after a moment or two, you should be able to pull out. And I'm not, I'm not actually pulling, I'm just sort of holding it, but I can feel it moving out and you can see my finger moving now. And I should be able to pull this out all the way out. Yeah, this is tedious. If you're not a patient person, I can advise that maybe um, 3D pens aren't for you. <laughs> oh. oh, there we go. That's it out. Now, there will be some residual filament that's already gone into the melting chamber if you like um so when i put my next color in it will come out orange to begin with right so i'm going to try something a bit more adventurous now i am imminently going on my honeymoon oh that just reminds me before we go any further for those of you who are regular viewers the next video or possibly the one after would normally be my scroller box unboxing which you know i like to do as soon as it arrives i will be away by the time that box gets here so the scroller box unboxing um is going to be a lot later this well this month it'll be into october um so just to make you aware of that in case you're you're expecting it because it's not it's not going to happen i'm not particularly happy about the idea of posting my scroller box out to mauritius from scotland i don't think that's a good idea <laughs> i probably wouldn't get there in one piece maybe i might not even get there on time anyway with that in mind um, trying to do something a bit more interesting because I'm at that stage and I'm in that kind of mindset I'm not in holiday mode yet but I'm getting there um, I'm going to try and create a 3D object just now I'm not expecting it to be perfect or anywhere near it in fact I'll be happy if it just works but I thought I could maybe do a palm tree on an island that might be nice you know and I have it have it standing up so I have found this sort of almost fleshy coloured filament and I thought I could use that to make the base which would be the sand of the island. So I thought that might be a good place to start and again that'll give me a bit of practice doing this kind of thing and see if we can make something quite sturdy because if I'm wanting something to, you know, if if, if I'm going to want the, the palm tree to stand up um, it's going to need quite a sturdy base to work from. So this is kind of like a sandy colour. So let's pop that in there. Oh. The noise is changing. I think we're getting near. There we go. Okay, so you can see there that first part is very orange and it's fading out. That's quite a nice gradient, actually. <laughs> okay. So that's me got rid of the last of the orange filament and I'm just going to pull this off. That's quite warm. It's not too hot to touch for me, but I've got like asbestos fingers. So be careful if you're going to do that. Oh, it stinks. 
Okay, so for an island shape, I'm just um, basically wanting to make a sort of wavy, you know, sort of island shape. It needs to be big enough, note though, that it's going to stand up. I think that's actually melted my craft mat. This is really difficult when you don't have anything to work on. Yeah, I've actually melted my craft mat. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't want to pull this away yet, but around this edge it's actually sort of, because the filament's hot, it's squished away some of my, my mat. Oh dear. Oh, that is actually really stuck on. <laughs> Maybe I should be using a different surface for this. Okay. Oh no, there we go, it's coming away now. Yeah, it's it's like fused itself to, <laughs> to the craft mat. Oh, come on, there we go. Can you see that? Oh, that's permanent. <laughs> Never mind. So I've got a very poor looking island shape, but it is an island shape nonetheless. And it's not flat at all, so that is a terrible start. I don't know how I'm going to make this flat. So I need to fill this in now to make it solid. If there's any I'm sure there's like a scientific formula and I know that when it comes to structures that triangles are the the strongest structure or framework that you can use this looks like a really bad star constellation <laughs> okay so I'm gonna get to work and fill this in and then I'll bring you guys back when I have finished that part Okay, so I have finished my base and I have learned a few valuable lessons as we've gone along um one of the first things is that I found it easier when I was filling in all these spaces to continuously turn the piece so that I've got a good angle for actually getting in with the pen. The other thing as well is if you remember the original shape was really unsteady on the actual mat. I have gone in and just sort of squished in some extra bits. I mean, I can get my nail in under there, but it has made it a bit more sturdy. It's not rocking about as much. So that makes me a bit more confident about um, perhaps, you know, <laughs> it being able to stand up on its own. The other thing as well is you really have to be patient and take your time. Um, I've already said that, but yeah, this, I mean, that just doing that, filling in what you can see is taking me nearly 20 minutes. So yeah, this is not, not a project for those who are impatient. I'm going to add some blue filament around the edges to maybe look like the water. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> that's a nice colour. So we're going to try that now. Now that did use quite a lot of filament doing this base part. Um, so if you're going to do any sort of big project or try anything like that, I think you need to um, make sure you invest in plenty of the filament because there would be nothing worse than spending all that time doing something like that and then running out of filament like two thirds of the way through. The other thing that you can do as well is now that that's all filled in, I could go over that with another layer and just smooth it out because obviously it's very zigzaggy. It doesn't look much like sand. Um, if I was doing a, a serious project, I probably would do that. But for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to because I will be here for about three days. <laughs> When making the palm tree, I'm thinking I'm probably better to make it in sections and then, you know, like maybe do the trunk and the leaves separately and then try and stick them all together. It kind of looks like a gummy worm. So I'm thinking that if I kind of maybe work, so I'm, I'm going to try and work on the mat to flatten this whole shape out. There we go. That's actually really nice. Again, it's just going to help anchor the entire piece because I've got to remember that there is, um, there's going to be weight on this when I start to build up the palm tree. So the sturdier, wider and flatter the base is, the better. So yeah, it's, it's definitely easier to turn whatever it is you're making rather than trying to manoeuvre with the pen. If you can keep the pen in a similar position and manoeuvre the actual piece of work, it seems to be a lot easier. The fact that I've got something coming together already and I've literally been playing with this pen for less than an hour, that's kind of cool. Now again, I'm not expecting anything spectacular. See if this palm tree actually stands up on its own and looks remotely like a palm tree. I am going to be satisfied with my efforts today. It does smell really bad. I have a thing about artificial smells and it's quite ironic considering where I live and what I do for a living. I'm surrounded by horrendous smells. Um, but 
I think it's just because it's like a, a very plasticky, chemically smell as opposed to smells from nature. <laughs> I don't know. But I find the same thing with alcohol markers as well. I find the smell of alcohol markers quite intrusive. Um, so I don't know. That's, that's, that is very flat and very sturdy now. That is not going anywhere. It's not rocking about at all side to side or anything like that. So just letting the... Just letting gravity do the work has really paid off there and letting the filament sink towards the, the table has really strengthened that up and that is quite strong. So yeah, that's, um, I'm happy with that. That's a good start. As I say, if I had uh, more filament and more time, I would probably go back over that and just make it really smooth, make it look a bit more like sand and not like, um, yeah, anyway. Brown and green. That's quite an offensive shade of green. <laughs> For the trunk, I don't know if any of you are familiar with um, Lego palm trees. Uh, Lego palm trees, they have these, uh, the, the, the trunks are like these kind of like cup shaped sections and they all slot together. It makes the trunk flexible because you can bend each of the sections individually to make your palm tree look as if it's swaying in the wind. So I was kind of thinking of doing a similar thing. Obviously, it won't, you won't be able to move it about once it's set, but in order to create that slight bend in a palm tree that you would expect, I thought that might be a good way to do it. So really what I want to do is I have to think about each shape individually. Stuck to itself. Okay, I could make... <laughs> Well, we all know what that looks like. <laughs> I could use this as a basis, I suppose. Oh no. Oh wow. The, yeah, the little hairs, you know, the sort of wispy bits, they're a problem. They are a problem. I really don't think I'm skilled enough to work at this level. Um, I'm just gonna risk it and use my fingers. Okay, that doesn't look like much at all. <laughs> however, 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 once again, it's a basis. So I'm going to, I have like a narrow end and a not so narrow end. Now that I have, again, now that I have a base to work from. Yes, now this is what I wanted. Now you can see there what I've done is I've actually made a recess and it's so that the next part will be able to fit in. That was exactly what I was trying to achieve. However, in terms of the bottom part, I don't I don't really know. I need the first one to be flat so that I can stick it to my island. Um, I might just worry about that when the time comes to it. I'm going to see if I can make a couple more of these and see how we get on. They're not great. I'm not gonna lie, they're not great. I think maybe another three would be enough. Wow, wee, this is complicated. This I thought I was gonna be doing something simple here. Hmm. Go home, palm tree, you're drunk. Okay, I'm kinda kind in a rhythm now. Right, let's see what this is gonna look like all together. I don't think this is gonna look much like a palm tree by the time I'm finished, but hey. I think that big part might have to be the bottom. It's still spitting at me. I wish it's... Whoa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think that's going to be a big enough palm tree. Do you know that? Okay, so I think maybe at this juncture, the best thing to do is to stick one section to the base and join all the rest together on the flat here and then stick the rest of the sections into the base section. I'm going to try and use like the, 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 the blob sort of tack effect and I'm ready with my piece here. Oh, there we go, 190. So I'm basically just going to put a blob if it ever starts coming out. Oh, I think I have a blockage. 
Nothing's coming out. Oh no, here we go. Here we go. So, I am basically just putting a load of melted filament on that and then quickly I'm going to stick that on there. Like that. I'm not worried about the 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 feathery bits just now. I'll cut them off later. And I'm just going to try and reinforce it a little bit around the base. This is a, I wonder if I, yeah, I can squish that in. Yeah, that you do have like a few seconds. You, ha you have like this window where it's still, it's still warm enough to manipulate. I could do with one of these little cake turntables right now as well. Again, that you use for icing cakes. That would make this job so much easier. I'm going to get me one of them. I'm literally just going to squish some more filament into each of these little holes that I've created. And then quickly grab the next one and stick it in. Whoa, press the button by accident. <laughs> Outside, I'm sure you can hear one of our uh, lovely agricultural um, implements is rattling about. We are cutting hedges. Well, when I say we, it's the royal we. Obviously, I'm not cutting hedges because I'm in here doing this. Um, so if you can hear the clattering and stuff in the background, once again, I apologise. It is uh, an occupational hazard. Okay, so you can see I'm starting to get a curve now. Very, very gently. Um, I don't want it to curve too much, though. I'm also going to have to fill this gap in. There is a massive gap there. I can't have that. That doesn't look very good. But again, that's one of those things I can tidy it up. I just need to get the, the basic structure on the go first. Quick, before it sets. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Get back in there, please. Oh, too late. It's hard. That sounded so wrong. Ah! Come on. Right, go quick. Okay, good. Well, this is going to be like a super bendy palm tree. <laughs> that might be enough to just... Okay, yep, that worked. Okay, not gonna lie guys, getting a bit frustrated now. Getting a touch frustrated. This is gonna be a really bendy palm tree. It's gonna, it's gonna be like a yoga palm tree, I think. And I'm gonna have to leave that to set for a couple of seconds because I think that if I try and do any more to it, it's gonna just all snap off again. I might try and reinforce it around the other side. I'll show you what it looks like from the side just now. Doesn't look like a palm tree, but one shall persevere. I keep holding my breath when I'm doing this as well. It's like, oh, I forgot to breathe. Don't worry, don't worry. That seems to be enough just to give it enough strength to stay put when you, because obviously when you put the next one in on top, it is putting pressure on the, on your joints as it were. I'm going to show you there we go, that looks like a reasonable trunk. So I'm just gonna, we're gonna start on some of the leaves now. I've had something curved to work over. Hmm, what could I use? Ah, I have a Prismacolor barrel shape here. That might be quite good. Gummy worm. All right, so for a leaf shape, I kind of want to go across the top and then have it, sort of taper its way to a point. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull that bit off because that was a mistake. Yeah, it's got a little bit of curve to it. That's good. That is exactly what I was going for. Happy days. So I'm gonna start here. I think it's... Yeah, this seems to spit out a lot of extra filament. Now I'm just filling this in. This is where I've found it's better to, to, oh, to take your time. Yeah, I'm not impressed with this green filament. It's definitely not as good as the other ones. Let's 
let's just see how we go again. Which is annoying. Oh, I didn't mean to press that there. Stopped it by accident. Itchy trigger finger. <laughs> Okay, so I need to try and devise how I'm going to stick these on, like what sort of... I think I'm just going to have to do one at a time, aren't I? That is not going to hold. Oh, maybe it is. I don't know where to... I just don't know where to go with this. I really don't. I need to put it at a better angle as well. Okay, right, I need to do a bit of work under here because that is not even remotely attached. Oh, wow! I have actually made a sculpture with a 3D pen. Oh my goodness. How did that even happen? Look at my little palm tree, it's so cute! <laughs> That's quite solid as well. Okay, so here we have the finished article. This is my little palm tree. And do you know what? I'm quite impressed with myself for a first effort. You can see that the base is actually really flat and that was my main concern. I was quite worried about that, but it's actually turned out okay. And it's quite sturdy. I mean, I can, you know, I'm happy enough to do, you know, tap it and things and it seems to be perfectly safe. So there is the first experience with a 3D pen. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I have had some frustrating moments, but I've had incredible fun and I've gotten a lot better than I thought I would. So that makes me hopeful that one day I might be able to make my inky butterfly. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a better job than I've done on this. If you like this video and you've enjoyed watching me uh, make an arse of some of the things and, you know, get there in the end, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to The Colour Cave, please feel free to join us. The more the merrier and we're quite a happy bunch anyway. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.